If you've welded for long enough, or you've had some seat time on a lot of different machines, you've probably come to the conclusion that not all machines are created equal. Some machines are fantastic on the AC side, but kind of lack on the DC side, or vice versa. Maybe you found a machine that was very feature rich out of the box, but you still needed to go out and buy all the pedals and components and torches and upgrade leads and all the rest of that good stuff. Or even the worst case scenario, you buy a machine for several thousand dollars only to find out that you have to upgrade it to get the features that it's capable of doing, but not included. And after you spend like 20 different tiers worth of features, you finally get the features you thought it should have had when it came out of the box. Well, that's very frustrating, and if you've ever experienced anything like that, you really need to look into the Feronius Magic Wave 230i, because it's a game changer. So let's kick this off with some of that full disclosure stuff before we get any further onto this one. Now, Feronius Welding did absolutely send the Magic Wave 230i out to us to use free of charge, but they know, just the same as you guys know, that no matter what you send out here to TFS, it's never gonna guarantee you a fantastic or positive review. That being said, we have our list. The things that I do and don't necessarily like, along with a lot of select features that are in this machine. However, this thing is so jacked full of features and so ridiculously advanced that I'm not going to be able to cover all of them in this video, but I will do my best to give you everything you really need to know when it comes to buying or even considering the Magic Wave 230i. So, video is going to be a little bit long, but let's just knock this thing out. Here we go. Now one thing that definitely separates this apart from a lot of other machines is right out of the box you find that these are actually the components made by Feronius for the Feronius machines. They're very specific to the actual machine itself and they're pretty impressive. So let's start with this TIG torch. It's about 26 feet long and has a standard rubber sheathing on the outside of it to help it protect it with the exception of the last couple feet of it which is made out of leather. Makes it a lot more easy to manipulate and move. Now each one has built in hand controls into it and these are interchangeable changeable. So the one I have right now will adjust the amperage directly on the machine when pressed and will also toggle your operation, your welding operation to turn it on and off. But really slick, it also has a built-in LED light, which is fantastic for getting into really tight places in areas like roll cages and chassis where you need that light because you just can't see. It's really fantastic to have on there. The only downer is it only works when the TIG torch is plugged in, so if you're using the pedal, none of these functions work. Now the torch head is a Feronius design, which means it works only with the Feronius torch body, but the head itself uses standard number 9 and 20 consumables. Now this one being the water-cooled torch, I can only verify that it works with these consumables, but that basically means that we can switch out, use anything off the shelf that we would like, including jumbo cups, Pyrex lenses, and so forth. Now another unique feature is the torch head. It swivels about 70 degrees left or right, which means you can reposition it and get your hand comfortable wherever it is that you see is fit or actually works best for you. Or if you swivel 180 degrees and pull on it, you can remove the torch head completely tool free, which means you can interchange it with other torch heads available throughout the Feronius lineup. It's a really awesome feature. Next up is the ground or the earth lead. Now this has a standard dense 3550 connector on one end, seriously heavy gauge wire, but on the other end, a very heavy solid brass cast clamp. This thing is just gnarly. It takes a lot of effort to open it all the way up, which means you're gonna have a nice, good, tight connection to your table and whatever you're welding. But where it really shines is if I pull up the lead used for my Miller welder and you put the two next to each other, that really, the Fronius one puts it to shame. That is built for some serious heavy duty work. It seems like no expense was spared on that one. A really nice thing to see. Now I'm very particular about my foot pedals and how I like them. I know which ones I like, which style I like to run the most, and seeing a plastic one with a big hook on it was definitely something I have never used before. So it took a little bit of getting used to. It's actually more like getting my brain used to the fact that this is a very lightweight plastic pedal, but extremely durable and ridiculously sensitive. And I mean insanely sensitive. But either way you slice it, the cable length is plenty long enough to get to just about anywhere that you want to be, and this hook that's on top of it is pure friggin genius it just makes like your life so much easier instead of kicking the pedal around just pick your foot up and move it over now, of course i'm wearing shoes in this video but i have tested it with very large steel toe boots and it works just the same attaching it to the machine is a quick snap and as soon as it loads up it automatically recognizes the pedal and brings up the last stored program when you used that pedal before that is really friggin cool 
Now let's talk about giving your machine some juice. Now each Fronius machine ships with multiple cables matching a multitude of different outlet sizes and types, basically different amperage ratings for both 110 volt and 220 volt service. The beauty of this patented design is that it slips right in with a small turn and it locks in place and it becomes an extremely strong connection. The other part of that, in case you missed it, is that the female receptacle is on the machine side, meaning that when you take the plug out of it, you give yourself a lot of space. As soon as you take it off the back, the back of the machine is the point that sticks out the farthest, so you don't really have to worry about jamming up your cord, ripping it out, or messing it up, or anything like that. It's very strong. Each machine also ships out with a nice argon flow meter equipped with two separate hoses for many different connections. Simplicity is the name of the game. Only four buttons and one encoder wheel to toggle all operations of the machine which can easily be done with your gloves on. The LCD display is very neat and tidy. You can see it from all directions and from very far away. It has lots of information on it, but it doesn't get cluttered, which is really nice. Now up top you have a status bar, and on that status bar you'll see the current mode that you're in and the available options up on display, which would display active or inactive based on that mode. It actually changes when you change the mode. So for right now, we're in DC mode. We have high frequency active. TAC mode is on right now, which is a function I'll have to show you in just a little bit, but our pulse setting and our lock out are both inactive right now but one of those little tiny details that I absolutely love all the way on the top right we got our date and time that is just really cool now we'll just quickly run through some of these buttons here on the top right is our process selection which grows from TIG to stick mode and also when in TIG mode and the torch is connected that'll allow you to access your 2T 4T selections as well as the spot timer right below that is our argon purge button which is great for when you're setting your flow meter you don't have to strike an arc you just push the button and out comes the argon until you turn it back off on the bottom left you'll see your favorites button or your job mode that's where you to store and access all of your job modes if that feature is active and then just above that is our menu control which we'll get into in a minute now the encoder wheel is what really controls all of this machine we can go through and press on the encoder wheel to adjust a parameter or adjust an option and then toggle the encoder wheel to actually make the adjustment on it and on our main display setting in each mode we have lots of things to adjust on this one and all of it is done with that encoder wheel which makes it super simple now realistically I could talk about this menu for days but we're gonna try and just breeze right on through it the information section contains all of your software versions IP addresses connecting to the internet all the rest of that good time and all the information should you need to know it display menu you go through things like background lighting to customizing the actual main display on the front panel the date and time settings all the rest of that good stuff job modus for recalling jobs uh, some ones that you store inside of the machine if that feature is uh, available to you the cooling unit mode we have a connection to the cooling unit which we can adjust whether we want the cooling unit to go on permanently off automatic or in economy mode which is really cool in our gas control menu we have adjustability of our pre-flow and our post-flow controls now the pre-flow can go all the way up to 9.9 .9 seconds which is pretty impressive but our post-flow a near unheard of 60 second post-flow that's an entire minute long if you need that much post-flow it's really cool to see stuff like this it's just like mind blown normally you see maybe 20 to 30 seconds but a full 60 is pretty impressive Next we have a menu dedicated to arc ignition settings. Now these are things like your high frequency ignition starts, you can turn it on or off, your reverse polarity ignition which gives you the most pinpoint arc start on DC current which is absolutely phenomenal. I highly recommend you keep that on. There's also ignition timeout and arc brake settings should you need to use them. Really cool stuff. Next to that is all of our stick settings. So there's lots of stuff to choose from in there. Not going to get into stick welding, but let's get into some TIG work. Now tacking is also known as the tack function. This thing is just absolutely incredible. It is a variable frequency pulser that varies with the amperage. So as the amperage is low, the pulse is high. As the amperage is high, the pulse is low. It's adjustable with the foot pedal. Now I can try to explain this all day long, but we have options here that I'm going to show you. First option is to keep it permanently on, and and the second option is to give it a time. So let's see what it looks like and sounds like when it's on permanently. Now 
Now, again, that's kind of tough to wrap your head around, but that's a variable pulse frequency with variable amperage at the same time. So as frequency is high, amperage is low. Frequency is low, amperage is high. It's pretty simple, but it also has a timer built into it, which means basically that whenever you set the timer, it's going to burn for exactly that long with the TAC function active and then switch over to a regular arc immediately after that. Now on to some pulse settings. This machine packs an astounding 2,000 pulses per second standard. Now, this could be looked at as a win or fail. If you want control over your pulses, say like the background current and the uh, duty cycle of your pulses, you need the Pulse Pro package. Now, that will bump you up then to 10,000 pulses per second with full control. But as a factory option, 2,000 pulses per second locked at 50-50. So let's switch it up and do some friggin' welding, actually, huh? Well, I'll tell you what, this machine has so many features in it, and I haven't even scratched the surface on half of what it can do. And you'll definitely want to look at that in future videos. But there's a couple of things that I'm going to do slightly different in this review video than I do on most other ones, because there are some really interesting things that really show you what this thing can do. First and foremost, this machine is running currently on 115 volt input power. And at 115 volts, its maximum power output is 170 amps. That is the highest output put out of any machine that I own that will operate on 115 volt input power. Now when you switch up to 220 volts or more, you get all 230 volts out of the machine. But 170 amps on 115 volt input is incredible. The second thing I'm going to do is run on stainless steel. Now when I run it on stainless here, I'm pushing this 3 8 or 10 millimeter set of coupons at 145 amps right now, and it's smooth, it is completely smooth, even on 115 volt input power. It is absolutely incredible. I also have the reverse polarity start on this one, which shows you how crisp and clean it is when you fire it back up and you do your restarts on it. This thing is absolutely incredible. Even as we get in close and we run this with that much stick out and that much gas coming out of that giant cup in a joint configuration that is pretty famous for producing a lot of turbulence in situations like this, you see how well it maintains its composure. That arc is pure butter. This is the type of arc that most welders dream of being able to have. It is unbelievably smooth. Now, much like the other welding vids where I have to test a welding machine, I'm also going to bust out the tubes because I really am, at heart, a tube welding guy. That's what I do a lot of. Now, this is one of those things that you have to test out on one of these joints because normally when you get to welding tubes, you get a lot of quiver, you get some wandering, and it's very difficult to control the torch, which means it's very difficult to control the arc. But the arc stayed so unbelievably smooth that even with my hand being slightly unsteady, it still excelled. Another area that it totally excelled in, where you can see some complete smooth running, nice, crisp, clean burning arc with, it was just straight up steel on a butt weld. It's really clean. I really love the DC side on this. It's just, it's, it's unbelievable. Now, you've heard me say this a handful of times in other videos, and I do firmly believe still that it's very difficult for a manufacturer to screw up a DC side of a machine, or to get wrong. I mean, it's got to be buttery smooth, it can't be very complicated, I think it's awesome. But I think is more difficult is nailing it the way that Ferronius did on this one. This is the smoothest arc I have ever experienced on a TIG machine. It is absolutely insane. Then you add in those other features like the reverse polarity starts, and the tack mode, and the pulsing, and all the rest of that stuff, absolutely blows my mind. It is incredible that a machine can come with that and still stay that smooth. It's amazing. But what really tops it is the AC side. Now aluminum is totally my jam and I absolutely love that metal and working with it. But where the features really shine on this machine is right there in that AC side and that's what we gotta cover right now. Check this thing out. Now once you switch the machine over to AC mode, simply by switching on the uh, menu, main menu, you'll see that the status bar changes only slightly, you get a couple of different features on it, and as we toggle through we have all of our typical stuff like we had on DC, but now we get an AC balance menu that pops up. Now this adjusts the positive side of the wave from 15 to 50 percent, which is pretty realistic because that's pretty much all you use. We also have the same electrode diameter selection, and now we have a new function called cap shaping, and this is basically the equivalent of switching your machine over to the you know electrode positive mode to actually get the round shape of the cap. I, I don't usually do that, but this machine is capable of doing it for you. 
Now once we enter our menu, we still have our same pulse frequency settings. It goes up to 2,000 pulses per second, even on AC, which is, like I said earlier, virtually unheard of. We also have the same other features on it, like start time, current time, all the rest of that good stuff, but now we get our AC frequency mode, which is adjustable from 40 to 250 hertz. It's a pretty good deal there. It's a nice range, actually. I don't usually use much more above and beyond that. I typically stick around 120. We also have AC current offset, sometimes known as AC bias or asymmetric wave. This means you can adjust the amplitude of the positive or the negative side independently from the other one. And my favorite feature above all, the independently adjustable waveforms. We have four waveforms available on the AC side, and they are independently adjustable from each other. So the positive side can have, let's say, a sine wave on it while the uh, negative side has a soft rectangle wave on it or a soft square. You can adjust these any which way you want to really dial that weld in there. And I'll show you a little bit about each one. But let's start off with some basic settings, which is the soft square wave or the soft rectangle wave. No offset, 120 hertz. Look at how ridiculously smooth this thing is. This is 80 thousandths aluminum, and I'm just busting out this perfectly controlled edge weld on it. It's about two millimeters thick. This thing is absolutely crispy and beautiful on the AC side. Now let's throw down this exact same settings with some, uh, well, let's just say jacked up amperage. We're running about 160 amps right now on this one. There's a big fat piece of uh, 3 8 thick of aluminum. But this first one's going to be more like what we call the decorator weld. Some good solid fat dabs on it. You can see that puddle has a nice good freeze to it. Nice and controlled. Everything is really solid on this one. The second one I'm going to lay down is basically my regular weld. This is my, I'm just welding aluminum all day long. This is about the speed that I run at. It's about the frequency of the dab that I do. I don't usually stop or pause or stack or anything. I usually just pound them uh, all in there, just line them all up like a pretty little chorus line. But you see both those two ways when I weld it, it acts just about the same with some really good fantastic results. Now we're going to really crank up the heat and I'm going to do some fat dabs on it. We're just going to stuff that rod in there and stack these welds up. Uh, even though this coupon is getting super hot at this point, it's still very, very controlled. And you can see that puddle will freeze just behind it and I mean, it's just everything is so perfectly smooth on this one. Very predictable. It's one of those things I absolutely love in a welding machine, especially on the AC side of one. Now, let's just say I wanted to kind of program my weld. Let's say that I wanted uh, a pretty high crown on it. I wanted a good solid penetration level to it. And I wanted it to freeze almost instantaneously with a minimal amount of etching uh, around that weld. I'm going to set my waveform on the negative to the triangle, my positive waveform to the rectangle. I'm going to offset it negative 15%. And we're going to change the frequency to about 180. Now, I also changed the cup on this one, and part of that is to uh, get that really tiny etching line. But as we zoom in here on this weld, you can see that every single dab freezes almost instantaneously. We have a very high crown on it, thanks to that freezing action in the positive side being uh, very prevalent, at least with the rectangle wave on it. But we're not sacrificing our penetration or our negative side to it. We're able to completely control this puddle and really dive it in like exactly where we want it. Now also in this one I wanted to switch it up and throw down a big old fat weave here to really show you how well that puddle freezes. Now it takes a minute for it to get heated up, but once it does get heated up it generally runs a lot hotter than most other welds because you're concentrating so much heat into one central area. So doing a three dab wide weave like this is generating tons and tons of heat. And you can see that once we get in close and it comes into focus here, how ridiculously controlled this puddle is, even at 160 amps. This is absolutely nuts. Every time you move that torch away from that puddle, it almost instantly freezes. You quite literally program this thing to basically say, I want just enough to get under the surface, just enough to clean without leaving a fat etching line on it, and give me all that freezing action that you would normally get out of like a high frequency triangle wave type of puddle. This is absolutely incredible, and it is by far my favorite function on this machine. Hands down, this is absolutely nuts to have this much control in a machine at this price tag. Now, of course, if we're going to start talking about the things that I absolutely love, we're going to get into our likes and gripes list. 
Now, it's difficult to come up with a gripe list on a machine like this. It actually really is. But if I really had to think about it, yes, I have a couple of items. But some other things that I could understand somebody else having a gripe over are a couple that I'm going to list on this one. First and foremost, the torch itself, this rubberized body, while it is fantastic, it is kind of heavy, so it does weigh you down a little bit. The solution to put the leather sheath over the outside of it toward the handle or near the handle is an excellent solution to that, and you don't realize how heavy it is that much. But if you are one of those people that likes to wrap the lead all over yourself and tangle yourself up in it, it may be a little bit heavy for you compared to like a normal torch. The other thing is the torch body. Now this took me some time to get used to, coming up with what it felt like a natural grip to use it. Now that is fantastic once you get a hold of it and you get used to it, but it's going to be difficult to actually get the hang of it if you're not used to what they call the Euro style torch. If you're used to the standard torch with just a round body handle on it, then you know this may take some time to get used to. Maybe a little bit tough. But those are the two things that I could see somebody else having a legitimate gripe over, but I was easily overcome. I could, you know, no problem for me really at the end of the day once I got the hang of it which was really not that long now the other thing is that i'm not really fond of my actual legitimate gripe the pulse features while they do go up to 2,000 pulses per second out of the box which is absolutely insane it would be nice to have control over the actual background current and on time and all the rest of that good stuff now it doesn't come that way out of the box you do currently at the time of this video have to get the the, the pulse pro settings but it's not like they're really bad, but it would be nice to actually have that control. But 2,000 pulses per second, and as controlled as it is, pretty sweet. The other thing, now as many of you know, I don't really like loud machines. And that's one big plus one on this one, is when the fan is on, it's not very loud at all. Unfortunately, the cooling unit, we can't really say the same thing about. Now, while the cooling unit does have modes like economy mode and automatic mode or whatever, so it'll start turn on and off as you go, when it's actually on, it's pretty loud but then the fan kicks on and it gets a little bit louder. Now it's not terrible, it's not just, you know, oh my god, I can't deal with this all day long, but at the same time, that noise is a lot louder than the actual machine itself. Now again, the solution to that really is to put it in economy mode or to put it in uh, automatic mode so it just goes on and off as it needs to, but it is pretty loud otherwise. Now the machine itself, we'll turn it off so the fan will cycle on its shutdown mode, That's not very loud. That's the loudest I've heard the fan yet. But either way, the cooling unit is a little bit elevated on noise. But, you know, there's a solution to it. But at the same time, it, maybe it could be a little quieter. Now, for those of you who have stuck around this long, we have two more fantastic, awesome things that I absolutely love about this machine. Now, look carefully as I circle around this machine here. Have you noticed anything about that water cooler? Well, look very carefully. There are no power cords, there are no external connections that connect the water cooling unit to the actual welding unit itself. That connection is actually between the two units at the top of the water cooler and the bottom of the welding machine. They connect and they are modular and as soon as they bolt them both together, they are now inseparable, become one unit with no extra cords or attachments or anything else that need to come off of it. It's a really well engineered design. And finally, we have the key card. Now, let's just say that a lot of people like to use your machine and you want to keep them out of all those settings. Flash the key card right in front of the key card sign to lock the machine out. Now, they can access anything on this front menu here, but the minute they try to go into the actual menu itself or access anything off of the main screen, they immediately get this pop-up message that says, Nope, not allowed to do that. Only the user who has the key card can get past that setting. So it basically keeps everybody out of your settings and keeps them away from messing with your machine, other than just the allowable amperage or whatever's on the display. To unlock it, flash it up again, and off you go. Now you can access your menu again. That ability to keep people out is just awesome. Now that is a seriously impressive feature list that really demonstrates what the capabilities of this machine can do out of the box for a fantastic price, which I absolutely love this machine. It's become my new favorite TIG machine by far. And it's also the number one requested machine to use in the TIG welding classes here at the Fabrication Series shop. So that is going to wrap it up for this episode. I wish I could get into more features and capabilities, but that's going to be saved for a future episode. So make sure you stick around in case you want to see those later on down the road. Now, I got to get out of here, but if you need to get in contact with us, check the description below. You'll see Instagram at the.fabricator, Facebook.com slash the Fabricator Series, or the Fabrication Series.com website. Once again, thank you guys for watching. Special thanks to Feronius for sending this machine out for us to review. I'll see you guys on the next episode.